Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein, both members of the Brotherhood, have scientifically proven the human brain emits and receives frequencies, that these frequencies travel instantaneously faster than the speed of light in every direction, and that these frequencies affect every person, place, and thing in the entire universe. What a pill to swallow. Thoughts are things. Your feelings and thoughts are vibration, energy, and frequency. And these frequencies affect physical matter and other brains. Whether you like it or not, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, you are creating and attracting every person, situation, and event in your life by how you think, vibrate, and feel. This is known as the Law of Attraction. It is a universal and spiritual law. It is in fact the highest law in the universe, and every physical law is subject unto it. This is one of the best kept secrets of all time, and the parasitical elite absolutely 100% do not want you to know about it. The number one disease of the mind is mysticism. Mysticism is the belief that you do not have control over what happens to you in life, but that outside influences control it. Every event that happens in your life, whether you perceive it as good or bad, is created by how you think and feel on a daily basis. Knowing this information can empower you and put you in charge of the direction your life takes. However, the powers that be absolutely want you to be disempowered and feel like a victim of circumstance. They want you to make excuses for why you do what you do, or why you fail to do what you ought to do. Earl Nightingale said, you become what you think about most of the time. Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, it can achieve. The reason Napoleon Hill's book is called Think and Grow Rich and not Work and Grow Rich is because our thoughts create and attract everything we experience in reality. Earl Nightingale declared that whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. Nikola Tesla once said, if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. You literally have all of the power of the universe at your fingertips. If you learn how to use this power, you'll be able to have, be, or do anything and everything you want in life. Would you like to learn how? Well, to be a master, you must first master the basics. The challenge with our education system is that it teaches people how to be smart at learning useless facts about various different subjects. It creates mindless, thoughtless slaves who do not question authority. I'm not afraid of the 10,000 useless things you have learned that you have practiced only once. I'm afraid of the one vital effectual subject that you have learned and practiced 10,000 times. I'm talking about the stuff that matters. So many people fill their brains with useless information. This information is designed to keep them from getting at the stuff that matters most. In order for us to move forward, you may consider familiarizing yourself with five basic concepts. Number one, who do you listen to? Number two, the teachability index. Number three, the training balance scale. Number four, the four steps of learning. And number five, mastering the four basics. So who do you listen to? Please take a minute to sit back and really ponder that question. What kinds of people have you been receiving advice from in life? Who have you chosen as your mentors? Do you have any mentors? Have they been where you are and do they have what you want? I sincerely believe that most people are number one, not listening to the right people, and number two, they aren't an apprentice to a mentor. This will make the difference between success and failure for you. Remember the old times when people would learn their trade in life by being taught by the master of any given trade? Why doesn't society do things like that anymore? Is it possible that this kind of structure had tremendous benefit? Is it possible the authorities wish to deprive you of this wonderful blessing? It is definitely something to at least consider. Ideally you want to be listening to those who have been where you are at or where you want to be someday. For example, if you want to be a millionaire probably isn't such a good idea to be receiving advice about success from your uncle who makes thirty thousand dollars a year. I understood that as I was listening to your wishes your command, I definitely wanted to eventually learn from high initiates of secret societies who have the health, wealth, and well-being to back up what they are teaching. Those desires are now manifest in my reality. What's your excuse? There is no excuse. This couple has driven two and a half hours. Young couple. And at this point, 
it's hard to get a job. All right? Jonathan, I don't think you have a job right now. <laughs> he had one, but he doesn't have a job right now. He'll get another job. Highly intelligent. But he's got a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> right, without the, the little E dot here, I could either take my phone or just put this on the back, hold it up to your ear, give me a lock. Cool, huh? But think that same negative thought. Think of Jonathan at his worst. It doesn't protect you from Jonathan. That's why you wear them both. Folks, I stole a brand new There are many scam artists who aren't super wealthy who make their money writing books and doing seminars on how to make money. In my opinion, that isn't an honest way to make money. If you want to write a book on how to make money, you want to manifest huge money in your life before you write that book. Walk the walk before you talk the talk. I really didn't want to get my advice from those unreliable sources. I wanted to attain true levels of success in my life, and you may have similar desires. So obviously the first basic concept is very important, something you want to familiarize yourself with. Next is the Teachability Index. How often have wise parents attempted to rebuke or correct their unruly teenager only to be met with disappointment? These parents will often tell you teenagers really believe they know everything, and they think they have things figured out, when in fact nothing could be further from the truth. This often leads to negative consequences and heartache that could have otherwise been avoided if the teen had been teachable. After all, this is just common sense, isn't it? Well, as I will show you, common sense isn't as common as you may think. Those in power have a very complex energy and vibratory system set up which has significantly dumbed the masses' intelligence down. That is correct. You heard me right. The IQ of the common individual today pales in comparison to those in sovereign authority all around the world. In fact, the difference is like night and day. One common characteristic of this low level of intelligence is arrogance. People simply believe they know things. They've got it all figured out, and when someone wise tries to teach them things which are contrary to their long-held traditions, immediately you see them retaliate and act like they know better. If you're reading this information for the first time, you may have some negative energy blockages that will prevent you from expanding your level of consciousness or from being more open-minded than you have conditioned yourself to be. But do not be discouraged. There is a solution. If you want to be teachable, it would be a good idea to increase your willingness to learn new ideas and to accept change in the way you think. Nothing is more important than the willingness to change the way one thinks. After all, if you're not growing, you are dying. So let me ask you. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your willingness to learn? What is your willingness to accept change? Ideally, you want to have a high willingness to learn and a high willingness to accept change. The definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. If you continue to think the way you've always thought, you will continue to get what you've always got. Now let's take a look at the training balance scale. On the training balance scale, there are two sides. One side is the thinking process, the vibrations and feelings. The other side is the how, the technique, and the action steps. Most people have been misled to believe that you must have a 50-50 balance between these two sides. You need a healthy balance of motivation and hard work or action. That you can't just feel good and feel better. You must also be concerning yourself with how to reach your goals or how to get to the next logical step in achieving your dreams. My friends, nothing could be further from the truth. That is the great lie which is designed to keep you mentally and emotionally enslaved. The elite class has taught you through use of the media that hard work and activity are the keys to true success. The reason they have you believe this is so that the poor will stay poor. The last thing they want is competition. So the honest to God truth is that 99.9 .9, if not 100% of success is in the thinking, vibration, feeling side of the scale and not in the how or action side of the scale. The how truly is irrelevant. When I told my psychiatrist I was going to cure myself of hypothyroidism, I didn't have a clue how I was going to do it. And quite frankly, the how was irrelevant to me. I was going to do it and that was it, period. Needless to say, I felt really good about the thought of proving her wrong. She was going to eat her words. As fate would have it, she did. Success is really just a decision away. And the best form of revenge is personal success. Just last year in July, I was diagnosed with hyperthyroid, and I uh, got on a remedy for hyperthyroid, and six months later, I'm cured. It's just a homeopathic remedy, and the hyperthyroid's gone, the blood tests say that it's gone. That's tremendous because I'm a completely different person now. I started the uh, 
Simeon's Phase 2 that you have in your book, and I lost 45 pounds in 45 days, Kevin. Well done. 45 pounds. That, guys, that, that's a pound a day, isn't it? It's a pound a day, and you know, it, it, it really is amazing. We hear this all the time. It works if people do the program and follow it exactly as it's outlined. It absolutely works 100%. I'm glad you called because, you know, we had Dr. Teresa Dale on this show and she uses homeopathic remedies, which are basically just energy right. frequencies invented by uh, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in Germany hundreds of years ago. These homeopathic remedies absolutely work at getting the body to go back to balance. And when the body goes back to balance, the hormone levels get balanced. And when the hormone levels get balanced, all the chemicals in the brain get balanced. And in many cases, people who have severe depression, mood swings, irritability, quote, bipolar, or all these things, attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, the people who have these, quote, disorders are really feeling bad. They have real issues. But nobody is addressing the cause and homeopathics gets the body energetically back in balance and then all these chemicals get back in balance and as you experience firsthand there are it's it's virtually miraculous and it's something that the standard drug therapy and surgical procedures and electroshock therapy and all these horrible things don't do i was seeing my psychiatrist she was the one who showed me the blood test said you got a hyperthyroid there's no cure you got to get on you know this replacement hormone therapy and you've got to uh, radiate your thyroid i said yeah right i got the homeopathic remedy six months later i showed her the blood test she goes wow and then she never talked about it again because she didn't want to no she can't because that's not her business she would she, she would she would lose her medical license next are the four steps of learning number one is unconscious incompetence Perhaps you may consider the possibility that you really don't know what you don't know. A wise man once said that the average human being only knows a fraction of 1% of all the knowledge available in the entire universe. Is it possible that there's a lot you may not know about? You really don't know what you don't know. Step 2 is conscious incompetence. The idea is to bring yourself to a place where, out of the honesty and sincerity of your own heart, you begin to concede in all humility that you are now consciously aware that there is a lot you really don't know and that ignorance is not bliss. If anything, ignorance is the only evil in this world. For example, you may not know the cures for virtually every disease. Do you know the cure for AIDS? If not, you ought to know. Do you know how to change the data of your DNA vibrations? Most likely not. Do you understand how to manifest your dreams and desires at record speed? Do you feel frustrated that you can't seem to achieve your deepest longings? Don't worry, that is quite normal. But if you have any sense of sanity left, it is not the place you want to remain. So I would suggest a good step in the right direction is to begin to recognize that there really are a lot of things you don't know about and that you really don't know what you don't know. Ignorance is a choice in an age where information is readily available from every imaginable source. Step three is conscious competence. This is the stage you will be going through upon your first reading through this information. This is when you are aware of the information, but you have to consciously apply it to your thinking. It's new information. Perhaps information you've never heard before. So for a time, you will have to consciously apply this information before it becomes a part of you, before you're on autopilot, so to speak. Like a child who is first learning how to tie their shoes. They have to consciously think about the instructions and go through trial and error in order to learn how to tie their shoes correctly. Eventually, if they do the right things long enough consistently, they will reach the next stage of learning. Unconscious competence. Where they are now actually tying their shoes without having to think about it where the information is now an automatic part of their subconscious DNA vibration. It's like driving to work and from work to home. Eventually you get to the point where you don't even have to consciously be aware of how to get home. You're doing it automatically without having to think about it. I would like to make an important point. Many of you are at the unconscious competence stage when it comes to thinking wrongly and behaving wrongly. You are unconsciously competent at doing the wrong things. Are you manifesting all of your desires at record speed? Or do you feel frustrated that you don't have what you want in life? If you're still frustrated and feeling lack, then you are most certainly unconsciously competent at thinking and doing things incorrectly. Recognizing this is the first step to recovery. 
One thing that really grinds my gears are people who, when I ask them if they have been reading a book, they say, oh yeah, I read that 10 years ago. Great book. I know for a fact that they didn't really learn anything if they are speaking in such a manner, because you cannot learn a thing by giving it one passing glance. In order to become a master of the information, you must master the basics. It's not enough to read a book one time and think you've got it. If you think that, then you are a zero on the teachability index, which means you are unteachable, and it would have been better if you had never read the book or listened to the audio in the first place. Congratulations, you've successfully wasted your time and energy. We never truly know something unless we're always learning and always getting it. Spaced repetition is the idea. It's simply how the human brain works. In order to be a master, you must be in a state of continually mastering the four basics. A punch is not a punch. It is a punch. What do I mean by that? Well, I know of an ex-Buddhist monk who teaches Kung Fu here in the United States, and his punch would throw you across the room and you could easily die from the impact. This man could throw a punch three feet away from the flame of a candle, and the flame will go out just from the chi energy being emitted from the force of his punch. He once declared, I'm not afraid of the 10,000 strikes you know which you have practiced only once. I'm afraid of the one strike you know which you have practiced 10,000 times. My dear friend, a punch is not a punch. It is a punch. So I would suggest that you begin to familiarize yourself with these five basic concepts. If you want to be a master, you must first master the basics. The elite members of secret societies gather together and only share this information with those who are peers of the same genetic vibrational makeup. The reason they do is so that the privileged can follow their bliss, their motivation, and their heart's deepest longings, so they can make whatever dreams they have in their hearts come true. That is precisely how this secret information is shared. The majority of this information goes back thousands of years. It has been translated from age-old manuscripts from various languages and cultures. Everything I'm about to expose you to in this video series is simply not new material. It has been used throughout history. Over time, this information has been re-edited for the purpose of simplification. This way it is easier to understand. It has always been this way when it comes to sharing. So ultimately, the information you'll be exposed to in this work is not my own. It comes from a collective group of people from the last thousands upon thousands of years who have put the information together through trial and error for the purpose of further mastering the basics. This information is used by an incredibly small number of people who have had access to it within their own close-knit private circles. I am excited, and you ought to be as well, because this information can truly change your life in ways and measures beyond your wildest imagination. Who do you listen to? Well, I would suggest that you should listen to those who have what you want and who have been where you are at. And ultimately, you should listen to yourself, your own feelings. The super wealthy of this world are individuals who are always willing to learn, who are always willing to accept change in the way they think. If you aren't growing, you are dying. The good news is that success is just a decision away, and you don't need to have super intelligence to achieve your own goals, dreams, or desires. No skills are required. The how truly is irrelevant, because when your attitude is right, the facts don't count. The majority of what people declare as facts are just people's opinions. One such fact is that true success is created by hard work with much attention on the how. This is entirely fallacious. You probably don't want to be getting your advice from poor-minded, low-vibrational, diseased, and loser-mentality type people. Aristotle Onassis said that if he ever went flat broke, the one thing he would do to get his wealth back would be to associate with wealthy, like-minded people. The super wealthy and successful realize that there really are a lot of things they don't know, and that they really don't know what they don't know. They're always growing and always learning. After all, if you want to be a master, you must first master the basics. Knowledge is power, but learning takes an eternity. A punch is not a punch. It is a punch. It may only take five minutes to reach a basic understanding, but it will take you a lifetime to master.